Okay, currently on my second channel, which focuses on hardware projects, I've been working with the Wemos uh, module, which is an ESP8266 module, which allows you to uh, connect to Wi-Fi and act as a client or a server uh, and do lots of fun things. And the Wemos comes with little shields. And in a video on my second channel, I just went over the button press. I showed how it works. Today, we're going to be looking at the code. So be sure to check out if you want to see this project in action, uh, the little annotation or card or whatever they call them now on YouTube. Uh, there'll also be a link in the description of this video to the video showing this project, as well as a link to all the source code you're about to see. So here is the code for the Wemos module. I'm using the Arduino IDE. Also check out uh, my video on my second channel on setting up the, up the Arduino IDE to work with uh, ESP8266 chips. Uh, once you have all that set up, here is the code. Uh, after the comments there on licensing and stuff, uh, we have some modules here. Uh, these are, or sorry, some header files here for the ESP8266. Uh, one that's just, you know, to set up the ESP8266. This multi Wi Fi uh, allows you to set it up so that you can have a list of different, uh, you know, uh, routers that you can connect to. So uh, we're only going to be connecting to one uh, access point in this video. Uh, but you could set this up directly, you know, so that if you're at home, the module will detect and connect to your home. If you go to work, it might connect to your work or wherever. You can set a, a list and it'll look for all the, the eight, uh, excuse me, all the access points in that list and connect to one of them. And then HTTP client because we're going to be requesting stuff or connecting to a web server. So we're setting up all those headers and then we're just setting up the, uh, the multi uh, Wi-Fi here. Uh, again, in this project right here, a little bit further down, we're going to be connecting to an access point, but you can set up a whole list. And uh, I'm just using that. You don't have to use that. Uh, you could also just set up, to set up to just one. But I figure why not throw that in there in case you want to add more than one access point. Uh, okay, so here we're going to set up some variables, uh, some constants, some integers. Uh, we have our button pin and our uh, LED pin. So on the Wemos module, uh, if you're using the button shield, uh, it's going to be digital pin 3 on the Wemos, uh, but in it's GPIO pin 0 when working the Arduino interface here. Uh, and then the digital pin 4 on the Wemos is actual uh, actually GPIO pin 2. So we have our button connected to pin GPIO pin 0, and the onboard LED, which is a blue LED, is pin 2. Uh, next we're going to set uh, T and T1, uh, I call it T just for timer or whatever, that's just, that's my thing as I explained in the other video when I've done project like this where the board's hooked up all the time, like 24-7, every so often you'll get a ghost ring. So what this is going to do is the program's constantly looping and we're going to set this little timer for this loop set to zero. T for timer, it's not really a timer, but it's it's setting it to T. And then the loop part of that, it's it's going to check if the button's been pressed for at least 50 loops. And I have found that if you just click the button as fast as you can, you're going to get an average somewhere between 40 and 60 loops of the code uh, just in a very quick press. So this is checking as long as it's being pressed for at least 50 loops. Um, and if you're pressing the button normally, it's going to be well above that. And this is going to prevent any ghost button presses. You don't want it to be pressed when no one's pressing it. It's just, I don't know if it's a power surge thing, uh, but every once in a while you get these ghost uh, button presses and this is to prevent that. And then this is our D, our delay. It just prevents you from pressing the button more than once a second because again, it's looping. So if again, you tap it really quick, it's going to loop 46 times. I'm going to think you press the button 46 times. So just saying, hey, wait one second. You can cut this down to less if you want, uh, but it's going to prevent the button from triggering more than once when you press it. And then the button state, the default button state is zero. Here we're going to set a string of, of a URL. This could be whatever, you know, films uh, by chris.com forward slash blah, 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 whatever, whatever your, your server is. If you're running it uh, locally on your network, it might be an IP address. And then, but it's just the URL to the web page you want to connect to when the button presses. 
Okay, and then we have our setup here. This is gonna run once when the board is turned on, and most of this is for serial port output, so you can troubleshoot. If your button's not working properly, you can connect to it through USB, and just look at either in the Arduino IDE in the uh, serial monitor here, or through any serial uh, application such as screen or um, just as raw TTY output. Uh, we're going to set the baud rate to this, but it could be whatever you want. Uh, and then we're just going to delay for a tenth of a second. And then we're going to start our Wi-Fi multi API again. This is uh, access point here. I said API, but I meant AP access point. Um, you can create a list of these, but let's say your access point is called my router, and then you put in your Wi-Fi password, whatever it is. Uh, so it will try to connect to that, and if you create a list of them, it will try one after another. Uh, next, I'm just going to print two blank lines to the uh, serial output. You could actually get rid of those lines and just do something like this. Should accomplish the same thing. It's just for formatting, you know, just pressing enter twice before printing this message. Then it's while it's trying to connect to an access point, it's going to, through the, to the serial port uh, just every half a second put a little dot, a period, so that you know it's running, you know it's trying to connect, it's dot, 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 until it does connect. Once it connects, then it's going to break out of this while loop and continue, again, printing a new line. Again, you don't need to do that. You could just also shorten that up like so. In fact, all these serial port, all of this probably could have been put into a separate function. You know, if your setup function is longer, you probably want to do that relatively short now. Uh, but after it does that, after it connects, it's going to set a new line, say it's connected, and then it's going to say what IP address that it got. So it says IP address, and then it's going to get the local IP address. So you know on your network what the IP address to your device is. Um, again, for troubleshooting, you can then check and make sure you see it on your network. Uh, that's more important if it was uh, a server rather than a client, but still good to know. And then it will wait a half a second. And at this point, uh, we're going to set up, we're going to initialize our pins. We're going to say the LED pin, which again is GPIO pin 2 or digital pin on the Wemos, uh, digital pin 4 on the Wemos. We're going to set that to an output because we're setting a signal to turn on the LED. Uh, then uh, button pin, which again we set up here to 0, which is digital pin 3 on the Wemos, GPIO pin 0 uh, in your uh, Arduino IDE here. And we're going to set that to an input because it's checking for when the button is pressed. We're going to skip this function for now, the send press function. Um, what we're going to jump down to is our main loop down here. And here we're going to read the state. This is going to check uh, what is the state of our pin. Is it high or low, one or, uh, one or zero? Uh, and it's going to get back, and then we're going to check, is it high? Uh, and if it is high, we're going to do one thing, and if not, we're going to do another. So, if the button is high, in this case, uh, using the shield here, it means the button is not being pressed. Or, I'm sorry, the button is being pressed. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, I'm sorry, no, I was right the first time. It's confusing because the button can press can be high or low depending on how your hardware is set up. So in this case, it's checking if it's high, that means the button is not being pressed. What we're going to do is we're going to set the LED pin to high and turn off the LED. And in this case, we're also going to set T to zero, uh, which is resetting our timer. So the button not being pressed, it's going to make sure that our loop timer here, which is again, preventing ghost uh, button presses uh, to zero. Okay, if anything else, meaning if the button is pressed, what we're gonna do is we're going to loop and we're gonna check, is T equal to TL? And we set TL set to 50. Uh, so when the button is initially pressed, it's not going to equal that, it's gonna equal zero. It's gonna say zero does not equal uh, 50, so it's actually going to go down to our else here and just add one to our timer there. Our, and so, again, a very quick button press. It's going to loop 40 to 60 times if you press it as quick as you can. Um, so, even a quick button press, it's going to quickly add up. It's going to loop through this until it hits 50. Then it's going to go, oh, T equals TL, which is 50. And then it's going to say, okay, Write the LED, make it low, so it's going to turn on the LED, send to our serial console that the button has been pressed, and then run our function 
of, uh, of the button being pressed, send press, uh, which is going to send a signal to a web server. And then delay D, and again we set D up here set to uh, 1000, which is 1000th of a second, so that's one second there. So it's going to make sure that it stops our loop for one second. Uh, after, that's after it runs this function. So let's go ahead and look at our send press function. Here we're going to send again some information to the serial console. Again, this is great for troubleshooting. We're going to say requesting URL and then it's going to print the URL that we've specified up here. So whatever URL you're connecting to. So it's going to do that. Then it's going to create an HTTP client called HTTP and then we're going to begin a connection to our URL. So we're saying to the serial port what we're connected to, then we're going to actually try to connect to it. And then it's going to get a response from the server and put it in uh, this HTTP code. And that code is going to be good or bad. And if it's as long as it's greater than zero, we're going to say that we connect it to our server. And then we're going to say, well, if the HTTP code equals um, HTTP code OK, meaning so we connect to the server and we actually got the URL we wanted. Well, then we're going to take the get string. So this is basically the HTTP uh, code, or I'm sorry, the HTML code, whatever the, the, the page puts out. So if it's an HTML, it's going to be HTML code. If it's JSON, it's going to be JSON. Whatever code is going to be plain text, it's going to be a string. And we're going to put it inside a variable called a payload. And we're going to say the server says and print out to our serial uh, client the um, our serial output what the web page returned and a lot of time you, in this in these scenarios you're going to be connecting to something that's going to give you a simple message a1 a0 a number of some sort uh, and in the case of the code that I'm going to show you in a moment it's going to be a number from 0 to 9 telling you what image is going to be displayed but again that that varies depending on what your, your page is because again you can write this code once put it on the device and then you can change the code on your server to do multiple different things Anyway, we're going to print out the output from the web server to our serial uh, uh, port so that we can read it and make sure we're getting what we want. Now, if the code is not greater than zero, meaning we were unable to connect to the server, we're going to get an error code and print it to the serial port, and then we're going to end our HTTP connection. So that is the code that we will compile and run on our Wemos chip. Now, let's look at some server-side options. And again, all this code and the code I'm about to show you is in the description of this video. So right here is a folder, and in here I have some files. I have uh, an HTML file. I have a folder uh, labeled photos, which has photos labeled 0.jpeg uh, 0 through 9.jpeg. And then we also have a CGI bin uh, with one CGI script in there. It's a shell script. Uh, that basically what it's going to do, it's going to shuffle and give you a number output 0 through 9. It's going to give you one of those numbers. So basically it's shuffling and giving you just one of those. Uh, and then it's going to print whichever number it gives as an output, but then it's also going to drop that same number into a file called photos.dat. Uh, and dot .dat is just something I came up with because it's not really HTML, it's not JSON, it's just a file. So we're gonna say, cut that out. And last time I ran this script on the server, it generated three. So again, it's a shell script. If I was to run this multiple times, you see it's gonna give me a random number between zero and nine. Uh, so we've looked at our dat file. We have photo, photos in here. We have a quick little script here that we just looked at. Let's look at our HTML code here real quick. So our Wemos is not going to be interacting with this HTML code at all. But basically I've got some CSS here that basically displays an image at uh, as a background image, uh, full screen, but to fit your window. So whether it's landscape or portrait, it should fit in the window there. Uh, and it's going to go as the background of this div tag here called BG. So that's what all this does is just create an image that's centered. It's going to default show you the zero dot uh, uh, JPEG from our photos folder. Now, here's our code. We've got just a few lines of code here. Uh, we are using, uh, well, I actually have uh, Twitter bootstrap in there, but we're not really using it. We could remove that. Uh, mainly we're using some jQuery here. Uh, so we're gonna call some jQuery. And basically it's gonna wait till the page loads and then it's gonna set intervals and it's going to loop uh, every 2,000 
thousandths, two thousandths, just just under a quarter of a second. If this was uh, set to one thousand, it would be one second. If it was set to five hundred, it'd be a half second. If it was set to two fifty, it's uh, a quarter of a second. I have it set to two thousandths, so it's a sixth of a second. Uh, and you can go less too. Basically, it's just going to start up our page, and every quarter of a second or however you set this, it's going to run this function and it's going to request whatever's inside the dat folder, which is going to be a zero, one, nine, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Uh, in theory, it should be one of those. It's going to take that data and then it's going to create a little link for that. So basically we're going to say uh, we're creating a string here, which is going to be our photos folder. And then uh, I'm splitting here the dat because just in case there's a new line character at the end of our output, which usually there is, I'm saying basically take the first line. I'm saying split whatever output this file gives us and cut it by each line and just give us zero, which is the first line. Uh, which should just be our number, and we're appending JPEG, which is going to give us something that looks like this, but it, instead of zero, it's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, or nine. And then we're just going to change the uh, BG uh, div tag here and give it a new background image with a URL of what we just retrieved here. Super simple. So again, this is just the output that's constantly checking what's in this file. Our Wemos is never actually act interacting with this file. It's interacting with the photos.dat file. Actually, no, it's interacting with our CGI file, which is modifying the photos.dat file, which this HTML and JavaScript is constantly checking. And again, to see that in action, uh, we you can check out the, the card or the link in the description of this video, which will show this in action. I also show uh, sending text, which is basically just PHP code, one line of code that sends an email. Um, and if you're unaware of this, you can send text to phones uh, by putting in the phone number at, and then depending on what the carrier is, um, it's something, you know, th there's, a, there's an address uh, that you can put there at the end. Um, which I've gone over in previous videos, but this is just basically, like I said, changing uh, what photo is displayed on a web page. But you can have it do anything. Now, to start up this code, uh, I'm going to use BusyBox, uh, and again, that's why we have the CGI bin folder, which is going to run a script. So basically, I have BusyBox installed. If you don't already on a Debian-based system, so Debian. Uh, Linux, Mint, Ubuntu, a lot of systems out there. I'm, you can use apt, but whatever your package manager is, apt, uh, so actually sudo apt install busybox. I already have it installed. Once you have it installed, you can say busybox um, httpd dash p for port. I already have Apache running on port 80, um, plus you need permissions, uh, elevated permissions to start something on port 80. So I'm just say 8080. And now it's running in the background. Um, if I ps aux grep httpd, you can see here I've actually got uh, two things running. I've got one here that's running, which is uh, my doorbell code, which is always running, and that's running on a, on a port here. And then I also have uh, port 8080 here. I'm going to just kill uh, this one here that we just started, just to show you again. So it's running in the background. Um, if you want to, you can do uh, F-F -F and maybe add some Vs there for both output. And now uh, it's not, instead of being thrown in the background, it's going to continue running in the shell here. So you actually will see any requests that come to this server. So if I was to open up Chrome, which again, I should be able to go to, uh, in this case, localhost, whoops, localhost, look, not local news, localhost port 8080 and actually I've already done this CGI bin random.cgi is going to give us an output and every time I do this it's going to change the number there uh, and if I go back to my shell here you can see that somebody connected that would be me what file they requested and that the connection was closed and then I connected again blah 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 it's going all the way through so so the F prevents it from going into the background if you want it to keep running in the shell here so you can see it. And the more Vs you put, the more output you get here. I think it's, you know, I think it's one to three Vs. Uh, so again, every time I run this, it's gonna give me a random output. So if I now go to localhost, photos.html here, 
you can see one photo and let's see if I can ah, whatever we'll flip back and forth if I run this I'll give me a zero there we go three so every time I run this this page is updating I should I just demonstrate it better with the Wemos on my second channel so again check out the links in the description let's see Woo! 20 minutes. This went a lot longer than I thought it would. I thank you for watching. As always, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. I'll check out my Patreon page. Help support my videos. Check out my other channel uh, for this project on hardware as well as others. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.